Well, good afternoon, YouTube. This is Chuck. And what you're looking for here is a top of my toolbox, and I uh, shot a picture of that uh, about my uh, my iron butt ride, and put it up on my community page this morning. And I'm going to tell you a story about that. But this particular video, I'm going to talk to you about this danger sign, and there's kind of a funny story behind that. So let me go over and get sit down, and I'll tell you that story. Well, for the sign, about the sign on the toolbox and the story behind that. Well, for my first 10 years in the fire service, uh, we rode the back, back step on the truck. That was called riding tailboard or riding the back step. And our trucks at the time only had two seats in the front and one for the driver and one for the officer. And so us firefighter types, we, we rode on the back. And that was a lot of fun on a nice day and kind of exciting. And, you know, got to wave at all the girls and all that kind of stuff like that. But it wasn't a lot of fun and when it was cold and raining. But uh, somewhere in the late uh, 70s and the early 80s, uh, there became a, a big safety push to get people off the tailboard. Because, you know, it was dangerous. It was a dangerous place to ride. And, you know, if a car would rear end the fire truck, you're the first one there. And and uh, guys got slung off every once in a while, even though we had safety belts. And and every once in a while, you'd go through a dip and and uh, if you if you you had to ride with your knees flexed because if you rode with your knees locked and you went through a dip, that thing would throw you up in the air. It'd throw you clear off the truck. And then guys got injured and killed doing that. So there became a big safety push. Uh, and about that time, the fire trucks started uh, going to what they called canopy cabs. And the canopy cab was uh, the, uh, once again, the driver and officer were up in the front. But the firefighters would ride in two fa uh, rear facing seats that were uh, where you sat over the front tires and faced to the rear of the truck. And then you had a roof over top of you, but the back of, the, back of that was open. And uh, that was called a canopy. Well, firefighters being a stubborn lot, they, uh, a lot of them didn't like that. They didn't like sitting down. They didn't like riding backwards. And so uh, they, uh, it became kind of a thing for them. And firefighters are some more, sometimes were our own worst enemy, safety-wise. But we got to the point where some of the guys would stand up and look over the top of the truck to the front. You know, and their excuse, of course, was that the excuse was they wanted to see what they were coming up to. And, you know, uh, they didn't like riding backwards. Uh, the, the the jump seat, they called those jump seats. And the jump seats at the time were pretty narrow. And the, and the uh, bigger guys didn't fit in there very well. And the seat belts on some of them weren't big enough to wrap around a big guy. And so it was impossible to wear a seat belt. And anyway, it was a design flaw, which they've solved in newer trucks. But... Anyway, that's kind of the way it was. And there was a big fight getting guys to, to try to, uh, to get them to s sit down and fasten the seatbelt and ride that way. Uh, well, we didn't get our first totally enclosed truck until 1989. So we run a couple of canopy cab rigs. And so like a lot of departments, we made a policy saying that, uh, that uh, you had to ride in seated and belted unless all the seats were taken. If all the seats were taken, then you could ride on the back. And uh, we're a volunteer department. Every once in a while, we get a bunch of volunteers hit the station in a call at the same time. And we'd have more people and we had seats on the truck to go. So we did ride, ride tailboard a little bit. But uh, anyway, there was a there was a, a, a lawsuit uh, where a firefighter, I believe it was up in Wisconsin, uh, he was standing up in the jump seat area of his engine, looking over the top of the cab at the direction they were responding and the truck had to make an evasive maneuver and he lost his balance and he fell off and hit his head and he was killed. Well, you know, that's that's going to happen. Uh, it's, a, you know, that's what happens when you don't follow safety procedures. Well, anyway, his family sued the apparatus manufacturer for making an unsafe truck and they found a sympathetic jury. And the, the uh, family got the family got uh, judgment for a whole lot of money and actually put that little apparatus manufacturer out of business. They'd been in business for 100 plus years. Well, the other apparatus manufacturers immediately came up with, holy cow, we got to do something about this. So all of a sudden, these little signs came up, like I showed you there. And every time you bought a fire truck, it had these signs all over it. Seated, belted, you know, and we called them idiot signs. Well, as the court cases piled up, uh, most all the fire departments, uh, established policies saying you had to be seated and belted but a lot of the old traditional departments back in the east 
Um, you know, the guys didn't pay much attention to that. That was just something written on a piece of paper, and they still did the same way they'd done it. And sure enough, the once again, there was a fatal accident. Some firefighter, unfortunately, got thrown off the side of the truck and, and uh, ended up getting killed, hitting a car or something, got killed. I don't remember the exact story now. But when, that time, the family, instead of suing the fire truck manufacturer, uh, they sued the department for not enforcing, they sued the fire chief and the department for not enforcing the policy. Well, you know, that kind of got us all of our attention. And so it became a, a pretty well-known thing, and a lot of us did it, is we bought these signs. And like I say, we called them idiot signs, and we ended up putting them on our trucks. And it was a typically a cover our hind end maneuver, to try to keep people from, from suing us in case they were violating policy. And so our truck had them. I bought a bunch of them. And after I put them everywhere I could think of that needed to be done, and uh, need, so you know you couldn't sit in a truck without seeing that sign to tell you to sit down and fasten your damn seatbelt. And uh, I had one left over, and I brought it home, and I stuck it on my toolbox. And, and that, was, uh, that was probably, I don't know, probably somewhere around late 80s somewhere and that sign's still there on my toolbox so that's the story behind that one and i thought you might uh you know it's a shame when things come to that is you know we made big jokes about it how we need to put a little sign on the thing saying don't put your foot under the tire because it'll run over you and you know and and like i say sometimes we're our own worst enemies but but that's where that sign came from and that's where those signs came from and you still see them on fire trucks and uh because there's you know it's still an issue, all the trucks now are closed cab and nobody rides tailboard anymore, except some of the real old little departments where they're still running the old 40-year-old trucks. Some of them still ride tailboard. And, uh, you know, I came from that era. And, but, you know, I survived it and made it through it. So, anyway, that's my story for that. And uh, I'm still uh, still recuperating. I'm still here at home. And it's a little windy outside, so I figured I'd shoot this from the man cave. So as always, uh, tell you to take care of each other, love each other. Uh, we'll tell you, we'll come back again real soon with another story. And for right now, I'm just going to tell you peace out.